Let's talk about one of the targets uh, for U.S. sanctions, uh, Nord Stream 2. Uh, Mr. Zile, uh, Mr. Lundmark, you both uh, have investments in Nord Stream 2. Uh, Nord Stream 2 is facing challenges both from uh, that potential legislation in the United States, also from the question of whether Denmark uh, will um, uh, approve the pipeline. Uh, why is Nord Stream 2 important, uh, Mr. Zile? Well, Europe needs more competitive gas. And we get highly competitive gas from Russia. And I think I don't want to speculate about any kind of intervention from any third party. But I think that Europe will prepare a political answer and that Europe will fight for the independency of our energy supply on our continent. In our Amer America says it's not independence, it's dependence on Russia. Yeah, uh, from a political point of view, I will not comment on this, but uh, we are in that market uh, since more than 50 years. We have an experience that more than 50 years. We are not getting each cubic meter from Russia, we get each molecule we have under contract. So therefore, our experience is that there is an interdependency. It's only one side of the metal you look at. Uh, Russia needs uh, the income, the hard currency from Europe, and we are good, we are paying our bill, not everybody, uh, but we are paying our bill and we do have the market. And from our point of view, Nord Stream 2 is express, especially an investment for diversification. If Europe will not give an answer on any interference, what will be the impact on decision-making from investors? We need to have a reliable framework, and it can't be a framework in Europe that you make billions of dollars of investments into a pipeline, and then you would like to bring that pipeline into operation, and especially several members of the European uh, Union are supporting the pipeline, and then you can't meet your uh, economic calculations anymore. That would be to the negative of investments into Europe. And from our point of view, it's a pipeline diversifying the supply, especially to Austria. Austria is importing 50% of the gas from Russia. We do have that experience that we have to import the gas just from, via one supply route via the Ukraine and we are, have an urgent need for diversification and honestly speaking as I'm a German I know that the transit in Germany is very very reliable. We won't see any interruption from Nord Stream 2 gas flow into Austria. Mr. Lundmark, if Nord Stream 2 goes live do you still, does Europe still need the pipeline through Ukraine? I don't think these two things are in any way mutually exclusive because uh, hey, let's just look at the facts. First of all, I agree with what Mr. Zeller here said and, and, and just to add on top of that, that uh, EU's own gas production will shrink by at least 50 BCM in a few uh, coming uh, years. Today, Europe uh, produces 23% of its electricity by coal, which is for good environmental reasons under a lot of pressure. So it's only a matter of time before all of that will go. And uh, on top of that, as was mentioned before, Germany will shut down nuclear. Similar projects are on ongoing or being discussed in, in Belgium. France may reduce in nuclear uh, on top of all of that. So, so from a commercial point of view, I think it's, it's extremely clear why there is a need for this uh, uh, project. The uh, LNG market is today a highly liquid uh, uh, global uh, market. Europe has 200 BCM of uh, terminal capacity for LNG and for European consumers it is very important that there is a functioning market where suppliers can compete on fair terms against uh, each uh, other and against this background uh, we fully understand and support the, the, the logic uh, of this uh, project. Denmark doesn't necessarily agree with you, it seems. Yeah, but that's then a highly political question that we do not want to get into. into. We, we, for, for, for us, this is a, a, a purely commercial project, and that's it. Okay, great. Let's move then uh, back to the uh, 
the, the political leader amongst us, um, Mr. President, the Ukraine contract, the gas contract for that pipeline runs out on the 31st of December. Do you plan to renew that contract and uh, where are negotiations over that contract? We have long been ready for talks with Ukrainian partners in that matter, but you know, they never found themselves prepared and braced uh, for talks to be able to come up with the empowered bodies that would be vested with the capability to carry that talks through. There are several options on the table. Number one is that has been is something that has been sold, said by the colleagues. Nord Stream 2 is a purely economic project. Number two, the US has always been against our energy cooperation with Europe. And back in 1960s, when we jointly with Germany delivered the well-known pipes for gas project and the first energy routes were laid down from the USSR to Germany back then in 1960s the US tried to derail that and thwart that altogether. This is number one. Number two, you can see the ex-Chancellor of Germany, Mr. Schroeder in the stalls. He knows quite well that, that when the first line was laid down, I mean Nord Stream 1, we faced a sim similar set of circumstances. The US was against and they mobilized all their potential in the EU and in Germany, but still we managed to do that and now everybody is happy that this is a working, reliable and stable route in operation now. Just fancy what would happen if we didn't have this. Europe would face some supplies deficits as uh, that conventional uh, supply as a conventional gas production fields get depleted in the UK and other countries and now same happens to Nord Stream 2. Denmark is a small country subject to huge pressure. It depends on them whether they will be able to stand up and demonstrate their sovereignty and independence. If not, other routes may also exist that will be uh, more expensive and will delay the implementation a bit, but still we will implement the project. And finally, with respect to the gas transit via Ukraine, it also should have the economic feasibility for all the stakeholders. You know, there are some different bifurcation points there, and Ukraine has been trying to implement the European energy legislation if they're able to do so till the end of the year. And what I'm saying now, it's a very important, probably stated for the first time publicly, in this case we will be ready to work in the framework of the European legislation. We will sign the transit agreement with Ukraine in conformity with the European legislation. In case Ukraine is not able, is unable, which is highly likely, because there are internal Ukrainian procedures that they have to go through, which is not an easy thing to do. In this case, we would be ready to extend by, for example, a year, the existing contract of uh, gas pumping and uh, transit.